How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Arthur and today we're going to go through task three of the JP Morgan quantitative research virtual experience. This task kind of takes a turn from what we have been doing in task one and two. Basically the idea of this task is we are given a data set and we want to use a couple of the features or variables that we have listed there to predict whether an individual will default on their loan. So there are a couple ways of doing this. I decided to do two of those, uh, but there are several other ways of approaching this problem. Uh, they're not particularly difficult. If you use some of the existing libraries like sklearn, this problem is pretty simple. So I'm just gonna walk through two of these, uh, starting with a logistic regression and also a decision tree. So I'll walk through my code and hopefully that will be helpful for you guys uh, as you try to approach this problem. So as we start off here with a logistic regression, I just wanted to highlight that the main reason that we're choosing a logistic regression in this case is because our output variables are binary. So it's either a yes for a default or a no for a default. So that's why I decided to start off with the logistic regression as opposed to something like a linear model can be more continuous output. Uh, but here we're only interested in a yes or a no. So that's the reason for that. Uh, this is the uh, data, data set that we are loaded, that we load in. So we have a couple of these key features at the top that we're gonna use to train the model. As I mentioned before, we start off with using the sklearn uh, package and we do uh, a couple a couple important things to train the model. So first of all, pretty simple, we wanna split the data into our features, uh, into our target and non-target features. So basically our X features here, I take out our default column, which is our target uh, and also our customer ID column. This is not a valuable variable for us here. So, and then for Y we have our output uh, sort of target, whether it's a default or not, or not. So one really important step that I think a lot of people might miss uh, is that if you notice the units of all of these numbers are totally different. Uh, so we have credit lines outstanding, you know, this is probably gonna be between zero to 10, but then we have loan amounts outstanding and debt outstanding and income, uh, which are all sort of dollar values. Then we have a FICO score, which is like totally a different index. And then same thing with years employed. Um, they're all completely different units. So it's really important for us to make sure that we standardize this data here using this scalar function. Uh, you can do it in any other way. Like you can, this basically uses z-scores, I believe. So this, this is a really important step to just make sure your data is standardized. The next step is we wanna split the data into uh, our training and testing set. You could split this however you want. So I did our test set size to be 30%. This random state here basically means that every time I run this, uh, I have the same uh, randomized sample of our, of our test size. Uh, so that's just for uh, consistency as I, as I was working through this problem. And then finally, uh, we have our logistic regression being defined here, and then we fit, we fit it here on the X train and Y train data. And just to see what we what outputs we get for probabilities, we have a, an array right there. So for us, this is like this is good. I just wanted to see if uh, this model is working. And the next step is basically we want to predict to see how accurate this model is uh, in predicting a default. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. I, I name and I have another variable saved for the predictions. And I create a confusion matrix here to see how well we do. So uh, this is a nice visual uh, for us to, to see what's happening here. Essentially, as you can see, the defaults that were predicted yes and were actually a yes was 532. The defaults predicted no and were actually a no was 2,458. So this is pretty solid, uh, but a couple of them we did get incorrect. So this here would be a false negative essentially. So we predicted no default, but in fact there was a default. Uh, and up here we got one false positive where we said they would default, but in fact they didn't. So it uh, looks like the model is working and pretty good accuracy level there. And before we move on, uh, I thought this would be an interesting view. The most important feature for predicting default, it seems here was actually credit lines outstanding. 
uh, followed by total debt outstanding. So uh, that's just an interesting, interesting um, observation. So, and the final step to bring this all together is I've created this calculate expected loss function, which is actually what we care about. And the most important part here is our expected loss calculation. So as we go through this function, the most important part is uh, sort of at the bottom here. So we take our probability of default uh, comes from our model prediction, okay? So this is uh, what we calculated above there uh, in the above cell. So, and then secondly is our loss given default uh, variable, which we are given that our um, recovery rate is 10%. So that gives us LGD of 90%. And the other feature we need is our exposure at default, and which is basically the loan amount outstanding that we see in our table, uh, our original data that we loaded in. And finally, we can calculate our expected loss by doing the probability of default, which again comes from here. We have our exposure at default, which comes from here and then basically our loss given default, uh, which comes from here. Uh, all that comes through as a final expected loss figure, and this is a dollar value. Uh, as an example, let's say our borrower features are these, which correspond to our features in um, our features in our data set. Uh, as that gets pulled through, for this particular borrower, it looks like a default is pretty likely given that we have a loss value of about $1,700 here. So as we move through here, we have our decision tree model. I just wanna show you guys basically my code. It is very similar. We train a decision tree model instead of a logistic regression. Highly recommend you read about the, the decision tree. Basically, you just get a bunch of nodes that get created. It's either yes or a no for a default based on uh, one of the criteria of the nodes. So here you can see that based on a couple of different uh, nodes, you have yes or a no output. So you can imagine, you know, if you have, if you have above a certain number of credit lines uh, and then you have above a certain number of debt outstanding, you're going to get you're gonna come down all the way to a node where it outputs the number of people that based on those criteria have defaulted or have not. So that's basically how a decision tree model works. It's pretty intuitive. Uh, I would just give a, give a read about it online. And then this is just a quick observation of that similar confusion matrix. Here's the code if you guys are curious. It's exactly the same as above, just using the decision tree. And here it's slightly different, you know, we have a slightly more balanced uh, false positive and false negative uh, number, but overall still pretty good accuracy. And then finally, uh, it looks like it's the same number, but it's actually slightly different. This would be our expected loss using our decision tree model. Based on how I set up the function above, you can just plug in decision tree instead of our logistic regression and that's our output so that's it for task three thank you guys so much for watching please let me know down in the comments if you guys had a slightly different approach or if you have any questions or suggestions on how i could have improved my answers i hope this was helpful and i'll see you in the next one